Let's talk about the basics of parent and subsidiary companies. This is something people ask is, how, how does this work? Why would you have a parent subsidiary situation? How do the companies interface with each other? And maybe if you're thinking about growing your business, it might be something you're thinking about. And it certainly makes sense in some cases. So let's zoom in today on what that looks like. So essentially what you have when you have a parent company and a subsidiary company situation is you have one company owning the other. So the company that owns the entity is called the parent. Usually the owners of the parent are either a single individual or maybe a group of investors, right? That's where your real economic um, drivers are. And then the parent company will be the company that leads the business. They then in turn own the subsidiary. Sometimes it's a 100% ownership. Sometimes it's an avenue to bring in other investors. Let's say you have a parent company and you want to have multiple locations, but you want to have people participating in the ownership of those multiple locations. What you could do is set up each location as a subsidiary, a separate LLC or corporation, and have different ownership. Maybe the parent owns 80% and the local person who's running the enterprise owns 20%. We've seen people do that. I've seen clients take a business venture where you have multiple different people who are participating in different segments of the business and they separate the segments into different companies and then each person owns that segment or a portion of that segment. So they're incentivized to grow that segment of the business. But because of the dilution factor, you don't want that person owning the entire business, right? Somebody who's running segment A of the business, dealing with customers for segment A, you might want them to participate in 20% of the growth of that business, but you wouldn't want them to participate in 20% growth of the entire business, which might include segments A, B, C, D, and E. So it's a great way to segment things. Also can be used for liability protection purposes, depending on what you're doing. Uh, the subsidiary, if done properly, should be a separate legal entity, separate from the parent. So you have a potential liability firewall there. If somebody sues the subsidiary, they would be going after the subsidiary's assets. That claim might become a liability of a subsidiary. But the parent may not be liable. So that's another avenue. Sometimes these subsidiaries are used to go into business in different states, different locales, different countries. That could be a reason for doing it as well. So there's a lot of different avenues. There's a lot of different reasons you would set this up. But a lot of people just wonder why are there parents of subsidiaries? Is it something they might want to consider for their business? What I recommend is if you're laying out the map for your business, sit down with your business lawyer, have a conversation, talk about your plans, your goals, your asset protection objectives, and what you're doing with your business, and figure out what the right mix is for you and your business. Hope that's helpful for you. Please drop comments, but remember that YouTube comments are not confidential. So I look forward to seeing your general questions, but don't put your specific information there. And please go check out our library of past videos and subscribe to the channel for more videos that will help you with business, business law, and the future of business right here on this channel. I'll see you for another video soon.